mystery in our history. Vacation? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this episode is going to be something else. This is a good old fashioned conspiracy. All right, here we go. Yeah, right? right. Hey, everyone, thanks for listening to the conspiracy. Just, It's just the conspiracy podcast with me and JR. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone, thanks for listening to the Mystery in Our History podcast where we take an in depth look at all things urban legend and conspiracy theory related and how they came to be. I'm J.R. Supa, and that is Chris Berry. Yep. Here we go, guys. So, Chris, I would like to start this particular episode with a reading from a famous autobiographical manifesto. Hey, that's just as good as any other intro, so hit me. Good. The sacred mission of the German people to assemble and preserve the most valuable racial elements and raise them to the dominant position. All who are not of a good race are chaff. It is necessary for Germans to occupy themselves, not merely with the breeding of dogs, horses, and cats, but also care for the purity of their own blood. There is an international significance to the elimination of Jews, which must necessarily be a bloody process. Ya boy, Hitler. <laughs> okay, so we're going to open with a Hitler manifesto. That's a strong start in an episode, but... I think we, you have my attention, and you probably have everyone else's attention. <laughs> <laughs> so just to be clear, we at Four Guys Media Network believe anyone who has beliefs like this should do the world a favor and kill themselves, just like Hitler did. <laughs> or so we think, but Hitler didn't kill himself, man. Beg your pardon? Uh, oh, Hitler didn't kill himself. Any good conspiracy theorist knows this. Funny you should say that, Chris, because the topic of this week's episode is... The Hitler suicide. All right. Well, we take it. We're gonna take a dive and look at all the possible alternative endings. We'll say of <laughs> Hitler's disappearance. I'm talking like it's a video game. I all know. the alternative endings. <laughs> so there are sources out there that claim his body was never recovered. I, I didn't know that. So that was uh, that was something I found out just uh, for this episode. Well, let's dive so, into the history part of this mystery. It. All right. All right, here's the history part. Yep. Yeah. By early 1945, Germany was on the verge of total military collapse. Poland had fallen to the advancing Soviet Red Army, who were preparing to cross the Oder between Kustrin and Frankfurt, with the objective of capturing Berlin 82 kilometers, or for Chris, 51 miles, to the west. <laughs> German forces had recently lost to the Allies in the Ardennes Offensive, with British and Canadian forces crossing the Rhine into German industrial heartland of the Ruhr. American forces in the south had captured Lorraine and were advancing toward Mainz, Mannheim, and the Rhine. German forces in Italy were withdrawing north as they were pressed by the American and Commonwealth forces as part of the Spring Offensive to advance across the Po and into the foothills of the Alps. Yep, they're pretty much just the whole world closing down the last of the Nazis there. Correct. Hitler retreated to his Führerbunker in Berlin on January 16th, 1945. It was clear to the Nazi leadership that the battle for Berlin would be the final battle of the war in Europe. Some 325,000 soldiers of Germany's army Group B were surrounded and captured on April 18th, leaving the path open for American forces to reach Berlin. By April 11th, the Americans crossed the LB, 100 kilometers, or for Chris, 62 miles, to the west of the city. On April 16th, Soviet forces to the east crossed the Oder and commenced the battle for the Silo Heights, the last major defensive line protecting Berlin on that side. By April 19th, the Germans were in full retreat from Silo Heights, leaving no front line. Berlin was bombarded by Soviet artillery for the first time on April 20th, which was also Hitler's birthday. Faux 20, Hitler! <laughs> by the evening of 21 April, 
or April 21st, for anyone who's not from Europe, Red Army tanks reach the outskirts of the city. Yep. Yeah, that sounds... That sounds right to me. I don't have much to add. You, you got this history stuff right, right? Uh, it's in your wheelhouse. Let's just put it that way. Let's, let's just <laughs> say, so far, I believe I am historically accurate. <laughs> At the Afternoon Situation Conference on April 22nd, Hitler suffered a total nervous collapse when he was informed that the orders he had issued the previous day for SS General Felix Steiner's Army Detachment, Steiner to counterattack, had not been obeyed. Hitler launched a triad. I'm sorry. Hitler launched not a triad because that's a Chinese mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Hitler launched a tirade against the treachery and incompetence of his commanders, which culminated in a declaration for the first time that the war was lost. Hitler announced that he would stay in Berlin until the end and then shoot himself. Later that day, he asked SS physician Dr. Werner Haas, or Werner, Werner Haas, mm, Werner Haas, about the most reliable method of suicide. Haas suggested the pistol and poison method of combining a dose of cyanide with a gunshot to the head. Luftwaffe Chief Reichsmarschall Hermann Gorig learned about this and sent a telegram to Hitler asking for permission to take over the leadership of the Reich in accordance with Hitler's 1941 decree, naming him as the successor. Hitler's secretary, Martin Bormann, convinced Hitler that Göring was threatening a coup. In response, Hitler informed Göring that he would be executed unless his, he resigned all of his posts. Later that day, he sacked Göring from all of his offices and ordered his arrest. <laughs> Jesus. So at this point, he's he's really just like, that's it. I'm putting my final punch in. I know I've lost. I'm taking you all down with me. Here we go. Yeah, essentially he thought his plan was foolproof. Yeah. And he was and going he... to just rule the world. And now he's like coming to the realization he's like, he's yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to go well for him. <laughs> yeah, it's lost at this point, basically, right. is what he's realizing. And then he learns this. On the afternoon of April 29th, Hitler learned that his ally, Benito Mussolini, had been executed by Italian partisans. The bodies of Mussolini and his mistress, Clara Petacci, had been strung up by their heels. The corpses were later cut down and thrown into the gutter, where they were mocked by Italian dissenters. These events may have strengthened Hitler's resolve not to allow himself or his wife to be made a spectacle of, as he had earlier recorded in his testament downing the efficacy of cyanide capsules distributed by SS physician Dr. Ludwig Stumpfegger, Hitler ordered Dr. Haas to test one on his dog Blondie, who died as a result. Come on, man. Why you gotta bring the dog into this shit? I Leave think they were, they were out of monkeys. Yeah, I guess so. Hitler and Braun lived together as husband and wife in the bunker for less than 40 hours. By 1 o'clock, I'm sorry, by 0 100, so 1 a.m. On April 30th, General Wilhelm Keitel had reported that all of the forces on which Hitler had been depending to rescue Berlin had either been encircled or forced into, onto the defensive. At around 0230, Hitler appeared in the corridor where about 20 people, mostly women, were assembled to give their farewells. He walked the line and shook the hands with each of them before retiring to his quarters. Late in the morning, with the Soviets less than 500 meters, or 1,600 feet, Chris, from the bunker, Hitler had a meeting with General Helmuth, Wheedling, Wheedling, sorry, Wheedling, the commander of the Berlin Defense Area. He told Hitler that the garrison would probably run out of ammunition that night and that the fighting in Berlin would inevitably come to an end within the next 24 hours. Wheedling asked Hitler for permission for a breakout. This was a request he had unsuccessfully made before. Hitler did not answer, and Wiedling went back to his headquarters in the Benderblock. At about 1300 hours, which is 1 o'clock p.m., he received Hitler's permission to try a breakout that night. Hitler, two secretaries, and his personal cook then had lunch 
after which Hitler and Braun said farewell to members of the Führerbunker staff and fellow occupants, including Bormann, Goebbels, and his family, the secretaries, and several military officers. At around 1430, Adolf and Eva Hitler went into Hitler's personal study. So, sounds like at this point, he pretty much had just accepted defeat. Um, he had nothing, right? He was pretty much bested at every turn. His coup to take over the world failed. Yep. He knew his allies were dead, and soon uh, he would too if he had not taken his you know if he if he wanted to take his own life so i mean talk about failure right yeah i mean couldn't even get into art school right yeah exactly (laughs) exactly several witnesses later reported that they had heard a loud gunshot at approximately 1530 after waiting a few minutes hitler's valet heinz ling opened the study door with borman at his side Ling later stated that he immediately noted a scent of burnt almonds, which is a common observation in the presence of prussic acid or hydrogen cyanide. Hitler's adjutant SS Sturmbundführer Otto Gunsch entered the study and found the two lifeless bodies on the sofa. I don't know if I'm pronouncing these right. I'm doing the best I can. That's a really good stab because that was... Otto Man had a long-ass name. (laughs) Yeah. Gunsch... Uh, boo, 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 boo. where'd I go? Find, on the sofa, sorry. Ava, with her legs drawn up, was to Hitler's left and slumped away from him. Gunch stated that Hitler sat sunk over with blood dripping out of his right temple. He had shot himself with his own pistol, a Walther PPK 7.65, which I think is also James Bond's gun. The gun is lay it? at his feet, and according to the SS Oberschaffer, Rockus Minch, Hitler's head was lying on the table in front of him. And he did the deed. He was done. And so ended the life of one of the most evil and douchiest men in history. Or did it? Well, if it... Uh, <laughs> if, <laughs> well, if that was the case, I think this would be a, a, some sort of history lesson podcast and not a mystery in our history podcast, right? <laughs> this would be a Mike's Mini History Lessons. That's right. Which so, is another show that will be launching in quarter two of 2020. Hey, so check that out, too, if you're, right. if you're into the history. Shameless plug. It's going to be just hey. a, an educational podcast. Uh, five to ten minute mini history lessons as drawn up by our resident history expert, Mike. Yeah. Hence the term. Good friend. Good friend. Known him for a long time. Correct. Okay. So, conspiracy theories about Adolf Hitler's death contradict the quote unquote (laughs) fact, Mm -hmm. say that with air quotes, that he committed suicide in the Führer bunker. On April 30th, 1945. Pause for sip. Mm-hmm. That was more of a, that was more of a glug, I would say. You're right. <laughs> Most of these theories hold that Hitler and his wife, Eva Braun, survived and escaped from Berlin, Germany, and Europe. While these theories have received some exposure in popular culture, these viewpoints are regarded by historians and scientific experts as disproven fringe theories air quotes around scientific experts <laughs> yeah but i mean that's what they that's what they want and need you to think right i mean think about this right if it came to light that somebody undeniably saw hitler alive and well this morning in brazil i bet everyone would be on the hunt for him right society mm-hmm. has to believe him dead or else there's just going to be a big o hunt for hitler going on Correct. Although, if Hitler was alive and well in Berlin this morning, I think he'd be like 130. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, no. That's the other side. Well, listen, they had Nazi uh, Nazi medicine, right? <laughs> like Red Skull. <laughs> yep. Oh, jeez. Well, Hitler, it was claimed, had been seen in Ireland dressed like a lady. Mrs. Mm. Hitler fire. <laughs> Mrs. Doubt Hitler. <laughs> no, Mrs. Hitler fire was perfect. It that was, was good. Great. Okay. I like. Holy we shit, like dude. that one better. Hoodoo! <laughs> 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 
this Hitler fire. Are you in there? Nine, don't come in. <laughs> <laughs> he Fucking is also Christ. reportedly seen in Egypt where he had converted to Islam in a coffee house in Amsterdam on a train traveling from New Orleans in a Washington, D.C. restaurant and in Charlottesville, Virginia. Damn. So apparently, so apparently, uh, uh, not Hitler likes to travel, get around. Uh, do you think his <laughs> views changed at all during his travel? Or do you think he's, uh, you know, assuming he's still alive and well? Or do you think he's still just on the, the war path in his mind? Um, I don't think if he survived, every, anything ever changed <laughs> in yeah, him. That's fair. Um, but this just kind of sounds like Hitler's day out. Or, yeah right <laughs> or my vacation <laughs> most famously there were multiple reports that hitler is living with old comrades in argentina having by some accounts been spirited out of berlin flown to a german air base in denmark and then taken across the atlantic by u-boat and nobody was any wiser yeah the uh <laughs> the u.s ones seem pretty ridiculous to me i mean all of this seems pretty ridiculous to me I'll, i'm gonna go on mm-hmm. record saying i think hitler just committed suicide uh okay. because he was a little little bitch but um i feel like they're pretty ridiculous because if he did survive he could have gone anywhere but then i guess like you can make the argument that you know hide in plain sight or this is the last place anybody would be looking for hitler yeah see that that's my argument to it is because after the war, we did take in a bunch of Nazis. We took in Nazi scientists, engineers, and many other high-ranking Nazis and gave them amnesty in the U.S. Um, so, I mean, who would be any wiser is they shaved off his little goofy stash and maybe shaved his head and called him Frank, right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I, true. I think he could easily blend into American society. All right. <laughs> It's, it's like that John Mulaney joke. It's just like, if you saw Hitler today, would you shoot him? And yeah. the answer is no. Nobody would do that because they don't understand how costumes work. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The myth that Hitler did not commit suicide but instead escaped with his wife was first presented to the public by Marshal Gregory Zukov at a press conference on June 9, 1945, on orders from Soviet leader Joseph Stalin. When asked at the Postum Conference in July of 1945 how Hitler died, Stalin said he was living in Spain or Argentina. This dif- disinformation propagated by Stalin's government had been a springboard for various conspiracy theories despite the official conclusion by Western powers and the consensus of historians <laughs> that Hitler killed himself on April 30th, 1945. Okay, so Stalin's just uh, stalling the correct info getting out, huh? Huh? Eh? St- Stalin was, was was he was stalling. Uh, uh, was <laughs> <laughs> that was a good joke. I guess I mean it's no better than Mrs. Hitler fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it it's way worse than Mrs. Hitler fire because that was fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> the first detailed investigation. I <laughs> just should try to jump back in. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to picture him putting his face in a pie to hide his face for everyone. <laughs> and he just comes up, and it's it's the whole like cake icing face, but he still has the mustache. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not as. It, we just need to make this movie, I think, you know, is I'm what in. needs to happen. We'll do, well, that's, that's the next project <laughs> when we actually have like Patreon followers and we're, we're making yeah. some money and all that kind of stuff. We could devote time we'll make... to, to making these awful shorts. This is it. Feature, feature film. This is mind fest movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Yes. I'm into it. <sighs> anyway, <clears throat> The first detailed investigation by Western powers began in November 1945 after Dick White, then head of counterintelligence in the British sector of Berlin, had their agent, Hugh Trevor Roper, investigate the matter to counter the Soviets' claims. 
His findings that Hitler and Braun had died by suicide in Berlin were written in a report in 1946 and published in a book the next year. Regarding the case, Trevor Roper reflected, quote, The desire to invent legends and fairy tales is greater than the love of truth. In 1947, 51% of Americans polled thought Hitler was still alive. Yeah, so, I mean, he's true. Because, like, that's the thing, right? It's like one of those things <clears throat> where it's just a little bit more fun to make the story than, than to take the truth. Um, I will go ahead and say, though, there is never evidence to back these things up. And whenever there is evidence, it's by one uh, one party and it and they basically that one party goes okay this is the evidence accepted at face value we'll never get a second opinion you're not entitled to your second opinion it's just how it is um and honestly that's just kind of how i became a conspiracy theorist to begin with um basically official reports i find to be lazy and usually uh there's a lot of holes in them that you can find and, and poke so, yeah that's fair uh, but uh, not to say that official stories our official, um, God, what am I trying to say? Official reports aren't true either. I'm not trying to just say that. Right. It's just sometimes just saying, they're lazy and they don't make sense. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. It's fair. And then when you ask questions, people just get mad at, at you. And it's right. just like, well, apparently I'm asking keep, the right they questions. They just keep pointing at the same document going, this right. is it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. There's no, there's no elaboration and that's what can be frustrating. Exactly. Well, let's talk about evidence. Chris. All right, I love it. I All love right. the evidence. Speaking of elaboration, <laughs> declassified FBI documents, our favorite kind of FBI document, contain a number of alleged sightings of Hitler along with theories of his escape from Germany. The FBI states that the information within those documents pertaining to the escape and sightings of Hitler cannot be verified. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. On May 30th, 1946... While the Soviets were investigating rumors of Hitler's survival, two fragments of a skull were retrieved from the crater where Hitler was buried. The left piece of the parietal bones had gunshot damage. It was kept in Russia's federal archives in Moscow and believed to be Hitler's for decades. In 2009, samples of the skull were DNA tested at the University of Connecticut. Yukon, baby. Not just for mm -hmm. basketball. <laughs> Uh, by a bone-specializing archaeologist for an episode of M History's Mystery Quest. The sample was found to be that of a woman aged under 40. Okay, so potentially. So not Hitler. Right. But maybe, Although maybe his... Although uh... Hitler was a little bitch. Mm -hmm. So it might uh, look like a, like a girl's skull. Da -da. <laughs> <laughs> the main issue debunkers have with these FBI files, the great majority of survival rumors described in these files stem from questionable sources. For example, mm -hmm. amongst those telling the FBI that Hitler was hiding in Argentina was a 97-year-old spiritualist leader of a spiritual cult and a spiritualist prophet and a journalist of the most sensational and unreliable nature, quote-unquote, if you will. That checks up. Uh, so I'd like to add to the end of this just because it has to do with the FBI and we all just kind of know that the FBI is a little bit untrustworthy when it comes to the note of national defense. Mm. Like, a.k.a. someone, some of this info is too powerful, we can't, we can't let it out, so we make up a narrative, right? Like, it's just kind of, it's been proven uh, that they've done that from time to time. But I, I want to say this because it, it has links to America, I guess that JFK kept a journal, and in one of his journal entries, he wrote, and I quote, there is no evidence that the body was found was Hitler's, end quote. And let's just say, huh. I mean, he was the president, right? He had connections. So I did not know about that. Yeah, he has a journal. He writes a lot about Hitler in his journal. It's weird. Yeah. Almost almost too weird, if you ask me. <laughs> but, <laughs> little little obsessed yeah. with uh, some yeah, Adolf? Uh, kind kind of he like praises him in some parts and it's like whoa take, take it easy there take mm. it easy because he, well, he does so the fact that he was a genocidal maniac aside mm -hmm. hitler was one of the most influential and talented 
speakers yeah in history yep and he got an I entire mean, country on board and then multiple nations on board with trying to eradicate an entire group of people yeah absolutely and like not the only... guy knew how to talk yeah you know i'm and not like he... again i'm not saying that he was a good person by any means but no but he was also one of the only people to this day who almost took over the world yeah the world like if he wasn't an idiot who again just going back to um bitchy little men if he didn't follow napoleon's lead and try to invade russia in the winter like a moron yeah like it could have turned the tide of a lot of different things right yeah so but going back to our actual outline <laughs> <laughs> i would like to talk about argentina in a little more detail because this is the crux of all the hitler living conspiracies yeah it essentially definitely. it all just ends with argentina yeah it's the most common conspiracy for sure yeah so some works such as gray wolf the escape of adolf hitler by british authors simon dustin and gerard williams suggest that hitler and braun did not commit suicide but actually escaped to argentina and argentina argentina <laughs> jesus drinking water folks drinking yeah, no, water also no today. i plowed through german names like i was from germany and now i can't say argentina right yikes <sighs> you got this anyway the scenario proposed <laughs> by these two authors is as follows a number of u-boats took certain nazi and nazi loot to argentina where the nazis were supported by the future president juan perón who with his wife evita had been receiving money from the Nazis for some time. Hitler allegedly arrived in Argentina, first staying at Hacienda San Ramón, east of San Carlos de Barrio, well, Bariloche. Hitler then moved to a Bavarian-styled mansion in Enalco, a remote and barely accessible spot at the northwest end of Lake Nuel Haupi close to the Chilean border. Around 1954, Eva Braun left Hitler and moved to Nuquin with their daughter, Ursula Ushi, and Hitler died in February of 1962. Interesting. So that just has him dying in 62. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, it, it sounds like a good spot. put him probably in his, what, 60s, 70s, something like that? Yeah. Yeah, somewhere around in that area. Um, it sounds like a good spot to lay low. I mean, especially since it's not as accessible as the rest of the island. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, who knows? Now, investigators of the history series Hunting Hitler claim to have found... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Claim to have found previously classified documents and to have interviewed witnesses indicating that Hitler escaped from Germany and traveled to South America by U-boat. He and other Nazis then allegedly plotted a Fourth Reich. Yeah. Well, listen, he's going to have to call it something else because he put a stink on the name with his last shenanigan. <laughs> yeah, I, I talk about World War II. It's just some shenanigan. It's, yeah. Jesus, Chris. A declassified CIA document dated October 3rd, 1955. Claims made... Sorry. A, C, a declassified CIA document dated October 3rd, 1955, highlights claims made by a self-proclaimed former German SS trooper named Philip Citron that Hitler was still alive and that he had, quote, left Colombia for Argentina around January 1955. Enclosed with the document was an alleged photograph of Citron and a person he claimed to be Hitler. On the back of the photo was written Adolf Schrittelmeyer and the year 1954. I love that he kept his first name and changed his last name to Schrittelmeyer. <laughs> the report also states that neither the contract who, or the, sorry, the contact who reported his conversations with Citroen nor the CIA station was, quote, in a position to give the intelligent evaluation of the information, end quote. 
The station chief's superiors told him that, quote, enormous efforts could be expended on this matter with remote possibilities of establishing anything concrete, end quote. Okay. And the investigation was dropped. I mean, that makes sense, right? I mean, he's not rallying people there, right? He's not... And it it's not solid enough evidence for the CIA to go check it out. So, I mean, maybe if he starts to become a troublemaker again, we'll just go go, go check him out, right? I guess. And so that <laughs> is, I guess, the end of the the multiple theories about Hitler surviving. Well, that's what you think until you forgot one theory. What do you mean? Uh, you forgot Antarctica. Oh, Jesus um, Christ. Yep, yep. So if you remember our, our Antarctica episode, we touched on the theory of Hitler fled using the German <laughs> submarine fleet to go inside the Earth via an entrance in Antarctica. <laughs> and if I recall correctly, that's also where you tapped out in the Antarctica episode. There's a reason why it's not in this episode, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to put it in here. So this one, <laughs> so this went along with the theory that Nazis plan to hide inside the Earth while developing advanced technology like spacecraft. It was known as Operation High Jump, and it's about as credible as any other one that we threw in here, so we're, why not just have a little bit of fun with it, right? It's so ridiculous. <laughs> I know. That's the fun of it. So, we have evidence that... Um, I'm sorry. We have evidence that we have taken in Nazis in America after the war. So, them escaping and staying quiet in Antarctica doesn't surprise me in the least. Because we have a world treaty of peace in that area. Um, so, apparently, at or near the Arctic... Or, yeah, the Antarctic uh, entrance is the city of New Berlin... Or so they say, and that's all I really have on it. If you wanna, if you wanna find out more on it, or we could do a whole episode on New Berlin, if you ever wanted to. You probably don't want to do that. I don't think there's enough, but we could try. We could make it short. I'm so upset with you right now. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I don't know. I think I think it's a I think it's a fun conspiracy. Fair enough. New Berlin inside Pause the air. Pause for sip. Well. It's a glug. Okay. So let's talk about um, some other theories. Okay. Most importantly, uh, the Soviet political games. All right. <laughs> so I know. Another possibility that has been brought up has everything to do with the Soviets. Those god dang Ruskies. Yep. On the same day that Soviet soldiers announced to the world that they had found Hitler's body and confirmed he had poisoned himself, Stalin was spreading a myth of his own, the idea that Hitler was still alive. Mm, maybe Stalin had his own info, or a direct line to his little buddy Hitler. Or, it's very likely that Stalin was playing political games. He knew that the Soviets had found the Fuhrer's remains when he claimed Hitler could have, been, could have escaped to Spain or Argentina. But saying this helped him to undermine his political opponents and strengthened his hand in territorial disputes. It also allowed him to avoid sharing Soviet evidence with the West, as this would have involved revealing the many embarrassing shortcomings of the botched Soviet investigation into Hitler's last days. Hmm. Ah, so it's a, it's a shock to me to find out that Stalin's playing dirty Soviet games to gain political party yeah. uh, power. So following the Soviet in allegation that Hitler was living in the British zone of Germany, British intelli intelligence instructed the historian and distinguished intelligence officer, Hugh Trevor Roper, to find out what really happened to Hitler. Politics played a part in this, too. The British hoped Trevor Roper's finding would prevent the spreading of a Hitler myth. The Foreign Office even considered destroying copies of Hitler's wills when they were discovered, lest they inspire a Nazi resurgence. Not a bad idea, really. Right. Just get rid of them. Was it all propaganda? Maybe. But there wasn't a whole lot on this. I just thought it was interesting to bring it up so that you can kind of think about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely, definitely worth taking a look at. Let's talk about debunking the theory that's my least favorite part i know <laughs> all of this is coming from 
sciencealert.com. So if you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at them. I uh, So sciencealert.com, by the way, not a sponsor. One of the most reputable websites I've ever heard of. I'm just saying I've never heard of this website before. Me <laughs> sciencealert.com. All right, sciencealert.com. Hit me. Directly from the website. <laughs> It took nearly 75 years, but for the first time since the end of the Second World War, remains alleged to belong to Adolf Hitler were finally confirmed as authentic by a team of French pathologists in 2017. Okay. So they were just... See, again, this is why I'm a conspiracy theorist, because just saying finally confirmed as authentic, to me, that just says, what? How? How was the method? How are they confirmed as authentic? I'm going to tell you. All right, let's hear it. All right. right. Skull fragments, (laughs) skull fragments, and teeth held by Russian authorities in Moscow were presented to independent investigators for analysis, who concluded they were a match for the most famous dictator in modern history. Uh, What were just skull fragments were a match? Like it's human head, the teeth, maybe. Again, dental records. I, I don't know how far back those go. So those could have been around in World War Two, sure, but it's hard for me to just accept people saying, "Yep, no doubt, ba- no no doubt, these are Hitler's bones." Like, well, the funny thing no is, DNA. is that this is the same uh, Russian authorities in Moscow, right? That gave the skull fragments previously that had gunshot evidence mm-hmm. yeah. and turned out to be a woman and not Hitler. After the University of Connecticut did it in two thousand nine. Ugh. Right? Okay. Or I think it was so, Yeah, right. right. Anyway, quote, the teeth are authentic. There is no possible doubt. Laid pathologist Philippe Charlier explained to the AFP, stating further, our study proves that Hitler died in 1945. Proves what? How does it prove any? Mm. I mean, again, it's hard to mess with dental records, but I, were <laughs> dental records around back then? You know what I mean? That's like me just being like, hey, I have proof of, of aliens. Okay, what's your proof? No, it doesn't matter. I have the proof. You know what I mean? Like, what's your method? They don't break that. <sighs> anyway, this is getting me in a tizzy. I can see that. <laughs> the teeth and bone fragments can now be traced back with confidence to a fateful day in late April when a defeated Hitler, hiding in a refurbished air raid shelter in the German capital, chose to take his own life by swallowing cyanide and shooting himself in the head. Again, the method used, uh, the uh, the method used that gives people the confidence, is not explained, right? It's no different than me just saying, "Oh yeah, I saw Hitler at Stop and Shop last week. I'm confident it was him." It's just no difference. Well, his body, together with that of his mm-hmm. wife Ava Braun, was swiftly cremated in the bunker garden, according to his wishes. Even his Russian shells rained down in the near distance. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the other thing, right? They got fragments from the cremation, I'm assuming, right? That's... Mm-hmm. But you, but usually when there's fragments in a cremation, uh, aren't, aren't they mixed, right, T- typically? We'll throw up some of the pictures. Because okay. they got pictures. They got pictures? Yeah, right. they got pictures. I don't know. <laughs> I'll check them out, but yeah, yes. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up here because okay. I just keep going over the same things. It's okay. <laughs> I love I love watching you get like this because it's I do, just funny. I, do. I get wild. Okay, so from there, it's thought the charred body parts were gathered up by the Soviet forces who had stumbled onto the shelter several days later. Also, keep in mind, Chris, that like this isn't a funeral home cremation. Like they probably just burn the bodies. Okay, so it's not like like they burnt it to dust and ash. Right, like it like, wasn't like a, an actual cremation. Like, I don't think they had like a cremation area set up in the bunker. I think they just like burned the bodies. Sure, okay. Anyway. Uh, do, 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 do. After a hasty autopsy, the bodies were interred out just outside of Berlin, only to be dug up and reburied again in a forest near what is today known as Rathenau. Another eight months passed before they were again taken out of the ground and moved to an army garrison further south in the town of Magdenburg. 
there they stayed for a quarter of a century. Until in March 1970, the garrison was closed down and handed to the East German authorities. Rather than leave the charred bones of the Nazi leader in German hands, a decision was made to destroy the remains and throw the ashes into the river. Great. Yep. All that was left were a few skull fragments and bits of jawbone, which were subsequently divided between the State Archive of the Russian Federation and the Federal Security Service, where they've sat ever since. Okay. Yeah. Or sure. maybe that's just what they want you to think, Chris. Yeah, right. Ding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. It, it It is just what they want you to think, right? I mean, think about this. Who else in the history of the world has had their remains transferred around like that? Mm -hmm. Like that's so many transfers for remains. The uncertainty around it is enough for me to say, you know what? I, okay, I'm not against the official report, but there are a lot of holes in it. There's also alternative theories that appeal to me. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't think he's really alive and well out there, mainly due to just age uh, being a f the main factor. But the theory does hold water, to me at least. The idea that he could have escaped his demise and just laid low and stopped being a disgusting world power. Uh, I think so. Uh, I think that, that could have happened. Um but, you know, again, there's nothing concrete and solid. So, uh, to me, Hitler died in the bunker. It's just fun to think about that stuff. So you're actually on the non-conspiracy side here. Um, again, I, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in between, right? I'm in between. To me, he died in the bunker. Also, though, if somebody pointed enough solid evidence my way about him escaping Argentina, escaping here, escaping mm -hmm. there, I would look at it and go, yeah, you know what? That okay. makes just as much sense as him being dead in a bunker. Fair enough. That's fair. I have to agree on the being dead in the bunker side, but yeah, I mean, you never know. Yeah. Can't trust well, those again, ruskies. Well, again, going back to, to what... Um, JFK said, which again, you know, he was killed by our government because he was deemed too truthful and too unreliable. Okay, let's not get carried away. We'll uh, we'll, okay. we'll do a JFK episode. Let's... All right. Well, you know, <laughs> that's, that's. I mean, like... I'm sorry. He was assassinated by a random person, um, but he wrote, you know, again that, you know, his remains were never, were never. Um, God, I forgot what the exact quote was, but they were never identified his remains were never identified right. and you know it, it, it and it holds true to the same thing you know you just see the patterns you always see the patterns right think about epstein when we did our epstein episode why aren't they doing dna testing on his body mm -hmm. if people think or if they have he, why haven't they released it right right and that's the thing right if people think that he's not dead why not release the dna report that says nope this body no, this is him the dna Done. says it's him sorry this is his body guys you can't deny anymore that he is not dead because here he is on the table it's for the same reason that that original <clears throat> tape went missing of him being assaulted by his uh, cellmate right exactly exactly so you know what i mean it just it, it, it gets too sleazy for me to just believe the official report without saying yeah but this also makes sense because you're being so secretive and weird about the official report yeah absolutely well that's how we're gonna wrap up on this episode all right <laughs> nice serious talk wrap up <laughs> yep nice and serious that's it no laughs okay see you next time thanks for watching yep. history and our history in our podcast i'm too fired up <laughs> <laughs> that's the outro you get i know all right, guys, thanks for listening. We will see you next time on the Mystery in Our History podcast. Bye. Take it easy, y'all. Hey, guys, thanks for listening. If you have any suggestions or topics for us to cover, email us at fourguysmedianetwork at gmail.com. If you're on the go, you can subscribe to our shows on iTunes. Be sure to check out our Patreon page, 4Guys Media Network, for access to exclusive content like minisodes and more. We have a lot of goals to hit, so we can keep improving and continue providing more content ad-free. So all of your donations are greatly appreciated. 
Make sure you subscribe to the 4Guys Media Network YouTube channel for all of our other projects by clicking the link on the right. And lastly, if you want to watch another episode, just click the link on the left. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.